In uh, this presentation, I will be uh, demonstrating the uh, commissions for Spire app. Uh, this is an app to calculate commissions uh, if you have staff uh, who get commissions on sales. And the reason this app came about is that I saw there was nothing comparable or anything uh, related to commissions in the market for Spire. And so uh, this uh, is an app that has very comprehensive functionality for calculating commissions and it gives you a full insight as to how much in, um, you're paying each uh, sales staff um, when it comes to uh, commissions. Uh, instead of having a report that may be designed to calculate commissions in a certain way, you can run it, you can see how much each salesperson is getting, but you don't have full insight into exactly how much and have the ability to quickly change commission rates uh, whereas uh, with a report having to perhaps contact uh, your Aspire partner to modify the commissions and again this gives you full control over how much you're paying each person and um, how much uh, they are earning uh, for commissions on given sales orders and sales line items. And so uh, what um, is uh, commissions for Spire? So the core um, commissions functionality and commissions for Spire allow you to define a commission percentage for each individual uh, salesperson. The enhanced uh, commissions expands an organization's ability to drive work behavior of commission-based staff with the creation of flexible commissions schedules. Whether the sales rep is a contractor, uh, employee, or vendor, uh, the commission options help fine-tune sales performance and increases uh, revenue for your business. So what are some examples of a more sophisticated enhanced commissions needs? So you may want to drive sales of a particular product line, and I'm going to demonstrate that, how to create a schedule. Assign commission schedules to reps and managers based on sales reps groups, uh, product types, customer types, and other criteria. Calculate commissions line by line on a sales order. And pay commissions based on sales total or profit. Vary commissions by salesperson, uh, customer, and other criteria. Pay commissions by AP check or by payroll time card posting. And I will be demonstrating these uh, different scenarios. So the first step here is to go and set up a salesperson to earn commissions. And so I'm going to go to the salesperson screen. I'm going to take uh, John Ather. And I'm going to say John is not a manager. Uh, calculate commissions for the salesperson, yes. And I'm going to give this salesperson a vendor number. I'm going to take this vendor number from Spire. And then what I'm going to do in Spire, I'm also going to go and create a general ledger account for earning commit for that specifically for commissions. And so in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make that a cost of goods sold because I have selected this uh, commission salesperson, commission salesperson as a um, as a um, a vendor, an external vendor. So I'm going to copy this GL account just to show that I can make any account commissionable. Seven one one. Four. And I'm going to call this commissions for vendors. So I could, for example, have one GL account for commissions for vendors, one for commissions for employees, and so forth. And you'll see later on where that comes into play. 
and so I'm going to close this shield account. I'm going to go back to my commissions uh, interface, Commission for Aspire interface, and I'm going to say define my GL account. So one, four. I'm going to save the changes. In this case, I'm only going to be doing a commission schedule, a regular commission schedule. I could also add bonus schedules, uh, bonus schedules and food companies sometimes come into play where you may pay a salesperson a commission based on the sales. So if they want over a certain number of sales, say 10,000, then they get a bonus. Okay, so I have set up John now uh, to earn commissions. And here in this case, I assign a vendor number. I said that he's a vendor. So it's an external salesperson that you may have. And the next step I'm going to do, I'm going to go and set up some schedules uh, for John. And so I'm going to go and add a new uh, schedule here. So it'll just be schedule number one. And then I will say this is for John uh, Warehouse. Warehouse VA. And so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to select the warehouse to be VA. And then I'm going to select that this is for John. And I'm going to go and calculate his commissions based on the subtotal. And I'm going to go and give him 10%. Here I also have the ability to set a start and end date. So this is an example for this would be if John was... Um, at a trade show selling products for a uh, given weekend, for example. So you may want to encourage John to sell more or get more commissions when he sells at the trade show. So you may um, give him 15% if he sells at the trade show and then have a start and end date for the schedule. In this case, I won't set the start and end date. Okay, I've set up a schedule for John for the VA warehouse and I want to do another schedule that is very similar, but in this case for the Toronto warehouse. So this is schedule number two. I'm going to call this John Warehouse TO. I'm going to set the warehouse to TO. And again, I'm going to set the commission uh, schedule based on subtotal. And for the Toronto warehouse, I'm going to give John 15%. And the reason is that you may have a warehouse where you have products that you want to blow out. You may not want to. Uh, um, you may have expired products in that warehouse or close to expiry and you may want to encourage John to sell uh, out of that warehouse so you're giving him more commissions just to blow out those products. So I'm going to save this. Actually here's one more thing, the priority, I'm going to set it to number two and I'll briefly explain what the priority is uh, later on uh, as well. So I've saved this schedule. And now I'm going to go and start the process of calculating commissions uh, for John. And so I'm going to go first, apply a filter. Here you want to apply the filter date range. So if you're calculating commissions on a weekly basis, you would want to filter, for example, for last week. I'm just going to select a large uh, range of data uh, from this demo database. And so you can see I have 75 uh, entries for John. That's 75 invoices that it will check to see if commissions apply. So I'm going to go and click on run now. Okay. And now I'm going to go to my commissions earnings tab. And so here's John. John earned a total of uh, $10,852 in commissions for this period, for the date period I selected. And so I can further drill in now. I can go and drill into this. So I see my invoices uh, for John where commissions applied and so I can see on each invoice how much commissions applied to it $352.80, $556.50 and so forth and I can also expand these invoices so I can see exactly which items are on this invoice and so here too I can go and see how much commission applied for each line item so $18 for this, $320 for this line item and $5 and $9 and so forth. So you can see with full transparency how much commission you're paying for each invoice. Now, say if I found a line or more than one line where the commissions did not apply correctly and I may want to revise my uh, schedules to a different percentage or add another schedule, I can delete this run as long as it's not paid. And I'm going to go and show later on how to pay an invoice. And so the next step I'm going to do, I'm now going to go and set up a schedule 
uh, for Mary. So Mary is not earning commissions currently. I'm going to go and select Mary. And so I'm going to say yes, calculate commissions for her. And then she's a vendor as well. And I'm just going to go and select uh, this vendor for Mary. And I'm going to select a different GL account for Mary than for John. And so here you can define the GL accounts in case uh, the commission earnings are supposed to be posted to different GL accounts based on what uh, commissions you paid so that you can get detailed financials on the commissions at the GL level. So I'm going to save this. And so now I'm going to go uh, to my commission schedules and I'm going to go and set up two commission schedules for Mary. schedule number three this is for mary for the va warehouse and I'm gonna select the warehouse and filters so as you can see i have many other filters i can apply i could specifically pay a commission on the part number based on description product code inventory type uh, and so there are many filters that i can uh, apply and so what i'm going to do here i'm going to leave mary is unselected uh, even though this will only apply to Mary's sales that she currently has in the system. But I'm going to show how that will uh, play a role later on. And so you can see du uh, commissions won't be duplicated. And so what we're going to do, we're going to pay uh, Mary a higher percentage of commission. And so I'm going to save this. Okay, so I've created one for Mary. I'm gonna go and create one for the Toronto warehouse as well for Mary. And so this will be the number fourth schedule. Mary for warehouse Toronto. And here again, I'm gonna go and select the Toronto warehouse. And I will leave out Mary as well, just so that you can show how the priorities and the calculation works where it doesn't uh, double up commissions. Again, sales subtotal, and I'm going to uh, select 20% for this as well. Save changes. So it's telling me that this will be a duplicate schedule. That is because of the name. So I'm going to go Mary. This is for the Toronto warehouse. So as you saw, first of all, it won't allow you to create duplicate schedules. So you'll never have to worry about, again, doubling up commissions or paying commissions on something twice. And so now we have two schedules here for uh, Mary. And I'm going to go back to sales history now. And I'm going to apply a filter. Again, I'll make my date range uh, very large so that I will have some results. And I'm going to apply this filter, and this will also include John's uh, invoices in this filter. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and say show invoice for commission salespeople only. And so now we see John. And we have a few invoices for Mary. I believe that I have not created any invoices for Mary, so let me do that. Let's create a sales order for uh, Mary. Select any customer. And assign this to Mary. We'll sell something out of the VA warehouse. So sell 100 of these. And I'm also going to go and sell something out of the <clears throat> TO warehouse for Mary. So we have three of these on hand. Ship three of them. Go and invoice this. So it wants me to assign Lot number, do that. That 
particular item isn't working, so I'll just process that anyways. Okay, so now I've invoiced something for Mary. And I'm going to come back into the app. I'm just going to go and double check, make sure that I had Mary set to calculate commissions. She has a vendor assigned. Yep. So now let's go back to sales history. And I'm going to go and filter. I'm only going to filter for Mary. So we have two invoices here for Mary. And I'm going to go and again just filter by date because that's a required field. Apply. And so again, we have two for Mary. So I'm going to go and run the schedule. I'm going to go and come to my schedule here now. Commission earnings. And so here you can see now we have one commission schedule for uh, Mary that we ran. And so she is earning $11,318 on commissions on this. And so um, I can also again drill down the line items where she's earning commissions. So here I see the commission amount schedules. And so uh, briefly going back to the schedules, the priority on each schedule uh, is designed so that you will not uh, duplicate commission calculations. So you could, for example, have a VA uh, schedule where you have everything out of the VA warehouse, but for one particular part number, you are paying the um, a salesperson a higher percentage of commission. So then you would want the priority to be higher, uh, number one, than where you only include VA warehouses because you want that one part number for John to be calculated on a higher commission first, and then the rest go just based on the warehouse. And so the last step I'm going to go and demonstrate here is uh, paying for these commissions. And so as you saw before, John, I've set him up for his commissions to go to GL account 7114. And Mary is set up to go to 7111 for her commissions. And so I'll pay both of them so you can see how that works. So I'll go back to commission earnings. I'm going to go to first to John's earnings. I'm going to click on pay. And so now I can set the date. And so the subtotal, uh, there's taxes here. So that's why it calculates that as a subtotal. And I'm going to go and type in commissions for John. Do the same thing for the memo. I'm going to go and click on save. So we'll go and do the same thing for Mary. Now what you will notice here is that you can no longer delete this commission run. The reason is that it's uh, paid, so you can no longer go and delete the history. So this is now gone to history. So we'll do the same thing for Mary. I'll pay her commissions. Okay, and as you can see, it goes to GL71111. Uh, and here at this stage, I can also overwrite the GL account if I want that to post to a different account. And you go and save this. The date is outside a valid range, so we'll do that one more time. And we'll select 2020. And I'll do that one more time for Mary. And save. Okay, so I've paid the commissions for Mary now. And now I'm going to go to both John and Mary. Here we have vendor number ALE673. I'm going to go to that vendor. So that's this one. I'm going to go and refresh. Here you can see now I paid John commissions. And it shows commissions for John as the reference. There's also the memo. And so it's now ready to pay John as a vendor from your accounts payable. I'm going to go and do the same thing with Mary. So this is Mary's uh, commission. So here we see commissions for Mary. Also, again, ready so that you can pay her from the accounts payable module. 
And so that is when posting to uh, the accounts are payable because they are external salespeople. I could also set up uh, John as an employee here. And then I define the employee number and then you can automatically create time cards for um, the employee instead of an external vendor. And so that can be done from here.